Hey, Richard Bryce here. In this video, I'm gonna be talking to you about the most important thing you need to do to be more consistent and cut down on the number of silly errors you make. And I'm not talking about your intent when you step out on court. I'm not talking about playing the percentages hitting cross court with more height over the net because you already know that stuff and sometimes that's not what you need to do. If you're trying to play at a high level, you get a short ball, you need to be able to put that ball away. So what I'm talking about is the number one thing that you need to do to reduce your chance, massively reduce your chance, of missing that shot. You might already know what it is, so what I'm also gonna be talking about is how to make it happen, because there's two things to everything in tennis. There's do you know what you're supposed to do, and then are you actually capable of making it happen? So I'm gonna be covering that at the end of the video, so make sure you stick around till then, because it's one of the most important parts. Now, if you haven't already subscribed, make sure you do that. Hit the subscribe button, hit the bell button, so you get notified when I release more videos like this, because what I do is, I teach people about tennis, but really I teach people how to get their body working well enough to play tennis at the level they want, because sometimes there's a bit of a disparity. You want to improve your game, but you just can't seem to make it happen. So make sure you subscribe and you don't miss out on any of my content. So what is that I'm talking about? Well, I'm talking about watching the ball onto your strings. You've probably heard this a million times, but my bet is you don't do it as much as you should. When I watch people play and they make silly mistakes, just about all the time, they lift their head on the shot. Now, the way this works, the way that your brain works, the way that your body works is, it's called hand-to-eye coordination because it's about your brain, your visual system receiving information and turning it into movement. In order to make accurate movements, to consistently hit the ball in the way that you want, your eyes have got to be looking at that contact point because that's what allows your brain to make the adjustments. Think about it for a second. The difference between the perfect shot, the difference between hitting the back fence, and the difference between the bottom of the net is a few degrees at the angle of the racket face. That's what it comes down to. It comes down to the angle of your racket face, the swing path, and how hard you're swinging during that swing path. So there's a lot that can go wrong. It's very hard to get it right. In order to get it right more of the time, you've got to be looking at that contact point. Now, you can get away with lifting your head a little bit, and there are certain things like awesome peripheral vision that are gonna improve the likelihood that you'll make the shot if you lift the head, but your goal is to keep your eyes locked on that ball at contact point. That will do more for your tennis than anything else. So next time you're on court, if you miss a shot, ask yourself, did I really watch the ball onto the strings? Did I keep my head completely still, like Federer does, when I hit that shot? And you'll probably find the answer is no. So just being aware of it is probably the most important thing that you can do to, to improve your consistency. But like I said at the start of the video, there's two parts to this. There's do you know what to do? And there's can you actually make it happen? Now you know what to do. You've got to focus on watching the ball onto the strings because that's how your brain makes the adjustments that you need to do to make sure the angle of the racket face is the right thing at contact. But whether you can do it or not is a different story because it's a lot to do with how the visual system tracks the ball. And there's actually two really important balance system reflexes. And here's where I'm gonna get a little bit deeper just for a second. And then I'm gonna show you some real simple things that you can do to start to train this stuff. When it comes to tracking the ball, we've got two ways to track it. Our eyes can make smooth movements or they can make fast little jumps. Now if the ball's traveling slowly, your eyes can track that ball nice and smoothly. We can just watch it as it goes past, a little bit easier. If the ball's going fast, so if you play at higher levels, you, your eyes can only travel at a certain speed. They can only move at a certain speed smoothly. So your eyes actually have to make lots of little jumps to predict where the ball's going. So whether you can do both of those different visual skills accurately is gonna have a big impact on whether you can actually watch the ball onto the strings and keep your head stable at that point. Now, the way the brain works, the way this stuff is controlled, there's actually slightly different brain areas for the smooth tracking, slightly different brain areas for the fast jumps, and different brain areas for different directions of movement. And this is why you can have problems with a specific shot. This is why you can have a really stable backhand, but your forehand is inconsistent. Or you might be really good on low forehands, but you can really struggle with high forehands. It's about the way that the eyes and the visual tracking system works. That's how things work if you're standing still. But as you know in tennis, you're not standing still, and that changes how your brain creates eye movements and ball tracking. We've got something called the vestibular system, which is just a fancy name for your balance system. It lives in your inner ear. Its job is to detect movement of your body relative to gravity, and especially to detect movement of your head. Now, when you hit the ball, the last part of ball tracking, you know, as the ball comes towards you, you can do that with your eyes, because depending where the ball is, you'll be fairly 
front facing, but those last moments, as you start to rotate into contact, doesn't matter what shot, on your backhand, as you're rotating onto contact, on your volley, as you're coming into contact, your head moves a lot. And when that happens, it gets detected by the balance system and your balance system then tells your eyes what to do. So it adjusts how the visual system works and it adjusts visual processing. And if you've got errors with the balance system, either it's not doing its job properly or it's not communicating with the visual system properly, it can cause you to momentarily lose track of the ball at the most important point. Like you're not gonna completely lose track of the ball, you know roughly where it is, but it just causes enough of a problem that you don't watch the ball in the right way at the right moment your brain can't make the appropriate adjustments so maybe you open the strings a fraction too much and the ball goes long. So this is a really important system and it's where I find a lot of issues with tennis players. I've assessed a bunch of tennis players and only a couple of times have I not found major issues with this system or the communication. But even when you don't find major issues, they're still normally small things that are just slightly affecting their ability to track the ball. And just like I said with the visual system, this is directional too. So we've got receptors on one side, we've got receptors on the other, we've got receptors that deal with different directions of movement. So the balance system can cause you problems with specific shots as well. And again, if you've got a problem with your high forehand, maybe it's because the way the receptor, when you lift your head up and right, isn't functioning properly. If you've got problems with your low forehand, maybe it's because the receptor when you go down and right. And this is really why people struggle with shots. They take lots of lessons and they aren't able to correct and make improvements in the way they would want despite taking lessons and despite practicing consistently. So what you really need to do is do a little bit of work on those systems to try and improve how they function. And then you'll find that you'll just start to naturally be able to do the thing that you want to do in the first place. So you've got to know what to do. Now you know, you've got to keep your eyes locked on the ball at contact, and then you've got to train your systems to make it happen. So I want to show you a couple of real simple exercises that you can do to start to train the system so you can track the ball onto the strings more efficiently, massively cut down on the number of errors you make. The way this is going to work, you're going to choose the shot that's causing you a problem. So if it's your high forehand, you're going to choose that. If it's your low backhand volley, you're going to choose that direction. And we're going to work on two different drills. The first one, it's called the vestibular ocular reflex. What that stands for is the reflex that keeps your eyes on the ball as your head moves. Real simple to train. You basically, you look at something and you turn your head, making sure that you're focusing on that specific target. The way that you're gonna do this, you're gonna set up as if you're hitting your shot. So if you're hitting an open stance forehand, so I'm gonna be left-handed for a moment, I'm gonna hit my open stance forehand, you would set up in your open stance. Then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hold my right arm in front of me, I'm gonna look at my thumbnail. I'm just gonna turn my head to the right, or to the left, sorry, and back to the middle. Left, back to the middle, left, back to the middle. This is gonna train the reflex that keeps my eyes watching a target as my head moves to the left. Then, I'm gonna train the opposite. I'm gonna stick my left hand out. I'm gonna train looking at my thumb, turning my head to the right making sure that I keep my eyes locked on that target as I move my head quickly. Because this is the reflex that's gonna keep your eyes looking at that contact point if you lift your head a little bit. So we've got the vestibular ocular reflex, we're gonna train in that direction, we're gonna train in that direction, and then we've got something called the vestibular ocular reflex cancellation, which basically means the way that you move your head and look at something at the same time. Now, that's the final thing that allows you to track the ball onto your strings. The way that you practice that one is hold the target in front. Again, I'm still in my open stance because the way the body works is specific, so it's just better to practice this way. And I'm gonna track it. So I'm gonna start there and track it. Start and track. And I'm trying to make sure that as I move, I can really clearly see my thumbnail, the target that I'm looking at. So you might wanna start slower, make sure you can do it, and then work on building up the speed that you can do it over time. So I know those things look strange, I get it, but these are the systems that really decide whether you can watch the ball onto your strings, and as you know, that's gonna be the most important thing for hitting with consistency. So next time you're on court, make kind of a mental note of what you're doing. If you missed the ball, did you keep your head down or not? 
and then spend a little bit of time off the court working on these little variations and you should find that things improve. You can also do it on court, especially if you're having a bad day. If you keep shanking the ball, you just can't seem to make it happen. Do those drills, you know, spend a minute, two minutes doing them and you might just find that when you get back out and start hitting again, things have improved a little. I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope you're going to put this stuff to good use. But if you're serious about improving your game, there's a lot of different things that we can look at like this that could potentially make a massive difference to helping you start to really break through to that next level. If that's the case and you do want to work at things, I'd love to chat with you to see if I can help. I've got a couple of different programs that I take people through to really help them get their body able to play at the level they want. So there's a link down below to my calendar. You can book a call with me. It's a free call. We can chat. We can see if I might be able to help. So go ahead do that now. Also, I've got another video that talks about a specific visual skill that's going to be really important for timing. It's called visual suppression. There's going to be a link somewhere around. Definitely check that video out because it's going to show you how to assess a really important visual skill and how to train it.